Okay, um, welcome to the Thursday, February 16th, 2023, regular meeting of the Historic Preservation Committee. Madam Clerk, can you please have a roll call? Here. Vice Chair Soriano. Here. And Chair Prasad. Here. Um, okay, thank you so much. We can now move on to public communications. Are there any members of the public here to speak with us on any items not on the agenda this evening? We have no public speakers. Okay, wonderful. Not wonderful, but thank you. Um, with that, we can move on to consent, consent item number one, which is approval of the Historic Preservation Committee January 19th, 2023 meeting minutes. Um, were there any comments on the minutes from the 19th? From any committee members? Nope. No. I also no. did not have any comments, so I will make a motion to approve the minutes from January 19th, 2023 as presented. I second. Roll call, please. Member Krieg? Uh, I second. Do you Third. approve of the minute? Yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Member Mueller? Yes. All right. Member Rubric? Uh, approve. Vice Chair Soriano? Yes. And Chair Prezell? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, is, is, some of, is some of this changed? It all looks very familiar, but if there are differences, maybe you could point those out. Uh, thank you, Committee Member Mueller. Um, the HPC is adopting the protocols that looks, look identical to that of the Design Review Committee, um, as well as are going to look identical to the Planning Commission. Theirs will be a little bit different, as they're not a recommending body, they're an approval body. The main change uh, that has occurred is there used to be a five minute time limit for public comment and that's been um, adjusted to three minutes in alignment with uh, the protocols for city council. Thank you. Um, okay, if there are no other comments on the um On the protocols, I will make a motion motion to approve as presented. And I'll second. Okay, Member Krieg? Approve. Member Mueller? Approve. Member Rubric? Approve. Vice Chair Soriano? Yes. And Chair Prezell? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, thank you, Chair Prezell, committee members. I just, w I, I don't intend to go through the slides that were attached, but I uh, wanted to give each of the boards and committees that community development does oversee um, these slides. Uh, just recently in January and then um, this, this month in February, the city council went through its goal setting sessions and discussed the goals for 20. 23 um, and as part of the information that was provided to them community development put this presentation together that included a recap of all of the items and accomplishments of community development 
in 2022, as well as um, our organizational structure, what each of the divisions and community development do and are responsible for, what our daily workloads look like, and then also large initiatives that community development is managing right now. Most of them are a carryover from 2022 that we will be working on in 23, and then some of the large projects that are currently under review. So there's a work plan at the end of these, this presentation that includes how we foresee some of these projects going through the process and initiatives um, through this year, bless you. Um, so really this is just to provide you some information. Um, the, the one initiative that does touch this committee is the historic context statement and survey where they are working on the survey now. Um, it's anticipated that's gonna come back before you in the fall. But feel free to take a closer look at this. If you do have any questions about it, feel free to reach out, but really wanted to provide some information about what's going on in the department. So, and that's, that's it for me. Great, thank you so much. Historic Preservation Committee Chair and Vice Chair for 2023. Um, let's see if I can muddle my way through um, the way that this is supposed to be done here. So um, I will open nominations for the posi position of chair. And at this time, um, any, any member may nominate any other member, including him or herself. Um, I would like to nominate chairperson Purcell for chair. Did we have any other nominations for uh, the chair position? Can I second that? I don't think I need it. Do I need it? it? Okay. Sure. <laughs> I don't think it hurts. Um, any others? Okay, so. I'm not exactly sure, so now I call a vote, or should we do vice chair at this point? We'll take each at a time, so the next step would be, um, Chair, that you would entertain a motion to close the nominations for chair. So I will entertain a motion to close the nominations for chair. Seconded. <laughs> okay, Member Krieg. Member Mueller? Yes. Member Rubric? Yes. Vice Chair Soriano? Yes. Chair Purcell? Yes. Congratulations, you are now the new and old chair. <laughs> Um, I nominate, you know, Soriano. Many members Soriano for vice chair. Has been nominated for vice chair. <laughs> Any other nominations? Okay. Well, I will entertain a motion to nominate committee member Soriano as vice chair or close the nomination process. I believe I need a second. Oh, I'll second. Okay, Member Krieg? Yes. Member Mueller? Yes. Member Rubric? Yes. Vice Chair Soriano? Yes. And Chair Purzell? Yes. Congratulations, you're the new Vice Chair, old and new. Old, well, <laughs> I think it was Paul's. <laughs> Formal item number four, project number 220018, Pierpont Inn Historic Design Review, located at 55 Sanhone Road. And I do believe we have a staff report. Yes. Thank you. Um, Chair Purzell, members of the HPC, my name is Jared Rosengren, senior planner. Um, this evening, staff is requesting the HPC to recommend the Community Development Director approve pro uh, some pr proposed renovations to the Pierpont Inn, which is local historic landmark number 80, located at 550 Sanhone Road. 
Next slide, please. The inn is located within the southeastern corner of downtown, just north of Highway 101 and just east of San Juan Road. Next slide, please. The property was designated local landmark number 80 in 1993 because of its association with the Pierponts and the Gleichmann families who operated the inn from its original construction in 1910. The Pierpont Inn represented the most, uh, first important development of the beach tracks and it helped establish Ventura as a coastal tourist destination. Next slide. The project includes a renovation of eight existing buildings. The concept for this project was brought to the HPC in January of 2021, where you provided feedback on the applicant's design study. Overall, the HPC was happy with the proposed renovation concept. Feedback included ensuring that the historic character of the buildings will be clearly identified and distinguished from one another in carefully selected building materials that remain true to the era that the building represents. And the applicant has been hard at work further developing their concept and they're excited to present their, to the HPC tonight. Next slide, please. While the Pierpont Inn, hold on one second. While the Pierpont Inn is a recognizable site for those driving along Highway 101 and is eventually visited by most residents of the city, um, I did want to quickly introduce each building that is a part of the renovation, and then I'll let the applicant walk us through their approach and the proposed changes. Next slide. So the, the main building was built in 1910. It was designed by the firm Hunt, Eager, and Burns in the, the Craftsman style. It's uh, still in its original location, but it's been altered several times with additions and materials. Even with the alterations, the building has enough integrity to meet eligibility standards to be listed on the National and California Registries as their, as their own landmark. The 50s flat is also known as the Maddie Gleichman House, is a two-story mid-century building located southwest of the Bluff House at the bottom of the Bluff. It was constructed in 1953 for Maddie Gleichman, and like the main building, it has been identified as being individually eligible for national, state, and local landmark registers as an ex excellent example of the mid-century modern house in Ventura. It was built uh, in 1953, as I said, and designed by architect Robert R. Jones. Next slide. The East Wing building was constructed in the 1950s in the mid-century style and was designed by Robert Jones. The building was identified as con contributing to the historical significance of the property, but it is not seen as eligible as an individual landmark. Next slide. The West Wing and the Bluff House were constructed in 1966. They're also in the mid-century style, and they were designed by the architect Fred E. Hummel, Jr. And like the East Wing building, they were identified as contributing to the historical significance of the property, but not eligible as individual landmarks. Next slide. And then there are the cottages, which were constructed in 1925 in the Tudor Revival style and they're located in the easternmost portion of the property, northeast of the Vickers Estate, which I'll get to next. They were also identified as contributors to the landmark's historical significance, but not eligible as individual landmarks. Next. And then finally, the Tig House, also known as the Vickers Estate, was a residence built by a neighbor just east of the property in 1935. It was later purchased by the Gleichmans. The building was not included in the landmark designation and has been substantially altered. And that concludes a quick tour of the property. Before I hand it over to the applicant team to walk us through their project, I wanted to repeat what's pointed out in the staff report, that the applicant's team include qualified historians who reviewed the project for consistency with the Secretary of Interior Standards for Rehabilitation and CEQA which also includes a comprehensive approach to the space between the buildings, including pathways and landscaping. The majority of the character defining materials and features um, of all the contributors will remain. And while some visible exterior changes are occurring throughout, the change changes will be completed in a sensitive, compatible manner. 
and they uh, will remain involved in the construction plans as they become more developed and submitted for building permit plan check. And once again, staff is asking HBC to recommend the Community Development Director approve the proposed renovation. And if there's any questions for staff before I hand it over the architect uh, or the applicant team, I can uh, answer those now. Committee Member Mueller. Thank you. Uh, I noticed on page nine of your report, and congratulations on summarizing what is probably the most complex thing we've had to deal with here in a long time. Uh, but uh, you make a note or a paragraph about the landscaping, and uh, it's clear that the landscaping that exists has evolved over many years or decades and doesn't bear any historical significance to the site. And that it will be, you know, redesigned and uh, refurbished at some point. Um, and my question is, uh, is that something that will become, uh, come before this committee in that it now affects an historic property? Or is, is that not considered uh, a requirement under the, the Secretary of the Interior guidelines? That, that's a, a great question. Uh, Community Mem Member Mueller, um, we'll kind of have to take it uh, case by case uh, to see uh, how it ends up uh, when the plans are fully um, um, developed. But we're hoping that there's enough, um, at least uh, conceptual information for you tonight where you feel comfortable um, letting them move forward um, with the, the knowledge, knowing that everything is also being reviewed um, with um, uh, historical um, consultants as part of the team. But if there's any guidance or feedback that you want to provide on anything, you can do that as well. Well, thank you. I, what I understand then is that those, uh, are, those landscape plans haven't been completed. We didn't get them in the drawing package that was emailed to us, so I, I guess that's in progress. So I get that. You've got a lot of... And we'll make sure the, um, the, the applicant tonight gives us as much information as they can on that. Um, and Levi, did you have anything you want to add? Yeah, and you, you just kind of touched on it earlier, and that, that uh, as it's been evaluated at this time, the landscaping doesn't um, pose any historic significance. So uh, as it stands, uh, it's not really a part of the review at, at this time. Uh, obviously, part of the uh, intent of the applicant is to get a comprehensive landscape plan kind of that covers the site rather than the haphazard over time. Uh, so it, it is possible, but as it stands now, none of the landscaping contributes to the historic significance of the site. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and I guess my, uh, my question is, is that then we are going to uh, render our decision or, or discussion today strictly on our architectural issues and that should it evolve that the landscaping plan is put in place without coming to this committee and that may be the way it, it works we we don't have to answer any questions about that that's that's due diligence on our part i think to know where our responsibility ends and that's maybe make a statement to that effect in, in what our um you know summary will be tonight that's an excellent point. And yes, you're you're correct in that uh, making that statement that that is not really within the purview of this request, and that you're looking at the architectural changes to the uh, existing historic resources on the site. Right. Thank you. I just wanted to point out that in the landscape assessment that was completed, the landscaping was identified as not significant, but individual features were identified as contributing elements to the landscape. So that would be to the the district, I would assume, and they're kind of like, those they're outlined on page 21 of the Page and Turnbull report. So there are some, there's contributive elements to the district as I read this. Um, and can I speak to that? Well, well, we'll make sure they cover it in their presentation. Okay. Um, it, it, and we can, okay. Um, what percentage complete were the plans that I'm going to defer that to the applicant to, to be able to answer that, yeah. At this time, or should we? Uh, well, I would uh, ask to wait. Okay. I have a question. Um, you had said that the east wing um, was identified as contributing, but, not, uh, but wasn't significant enough, on individu was not individually eligible. Yes. When was that review done for that, proper, for that part of the property? When that, was that well, we've had several in the past few years, but I believe that came out in the 2016 report. That was the HRG report. Correct. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. 
And then can I also ask where the, I didn't, find, I was looking for the, the landscape, the and I couldn't find the landscaping. Um, because I reviewed, because I know there was an initial um, presentation in January of 21, and I was not on the uh, mm -hmm. commission, I was not a commissioner then. So I reviewed it, um, and they had mentioned that report, but where is that report, the Page and Turnbull? Well, it's, it's part of the record, so it's it should be it's publicly available for anyone who requests it. Um, I don't know if that far back, if we're as where we are today with everything being available online. Yeah. But um, for anyone who wants a copy, it's available. Okay. Thank I have you. Just one clarifying question: when it lists, when it says like, um, let me get phrase this right. It says like. It's determined that it appears individually eligible for national state mm -hmm. landmark. So if it says it appears, does it mean there's another application process to get that building on the registry, or is is it yeah. on it automatically? If it if you say it appears, does that mean it's already there? So what that would mean it would be it like there's an expert opinion out there that that says um, from what they've been able to determine that that could go forward if mm -hmm. the property owner uh, intended to. Okay to make that its own individual landmark. So I didn't mention it, but the city didn't do any, itself any favors back in 1993 when we designated this landmark. We didn't go into detail about the site. Um, with the, There's multiple buildings. We just said, you know, the property is associated with these important people and a little bit here, a little bit there. So in a sense, it, it, uh, it made staff and the HBC's uh, job a little more complicated when proposed changes come aboard because now we had to figure out, well, what is important and what's not important? And that's really what we spent the last seven, eight years now doing was trying to individually figure out what are the actual important parts about this property? And that's why the 2016 report and the report that's attached to this staff report, which essentially took all the reports that had been done up to this point and did their own analysis uh, and basically concurred with what had already been determined. Okay, so basically those could be registered separately Correct. on their own. The other ones say it contributes as a whole, but yes. they wouldn't qualify on their own account. Correct. But they're under the whole umbrella yes. since they're under that whole property. That's right. Okay, I just wanna make sure. Yeah. I understand it. Yeah. Thank you. I had one clarifying question of staff as well. So I just wanted to confirm the city is pursuing a categorical exemption under CEQA for this project. Well, we, we don't make up our mind until the action is um, uh, made, but I would say we're headed towards that um, with everything we know at this point. So um, I'll, I would tentatively agree. by, you know, continued design review or input of a qualified historical architect or other similar professional, technically, just under, like, there's no, it wouldn't be legally required at this time. I mean, it's a, it's a project feature or it's built into the project description? It's not required at this time. It's a, so as far as uh, sequel wise as where we would be is it's been identified as a project, mm -hmm. um, but we haven't gotten to the next step would be based on the, the action because there's not only design review, there's a, be a, a coastal permit that would be required as well. So there, this is just one aspect of the project. Okay, okay. thank you. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions of staff? Well, at this time, then, I'm going to hand it over to the applicant. This is Bill Huey, and I'll let him introduce um, himself and whoever else he wants to introduce on the, that from their team that has uh, come with him tonight. Yeah, thanks so much, Jared. Um, it's a pleasure being back before the committee. Some familiar faces. I'm from your uh, chairwoman. Um, and some new faces. Uh, this is, uh, I, I'm here uh, uh, representing Three Thrones Hospitality, the ownership of the property. Uh, I'm an architect with Page, and we've been working with Three Thrones for the past couple of years to realize the rehabilitation of this property, which um, I think is probably most of you are aware is, is in, in many ways, some, uh, there's some decrepit 
elements and, and we're really trying to breathe new life into this property. Um, you know, Jared did a great job kind of recapping the history. I'll step very quickly through some slides that we have so you can advance things. You can go forward, yeah. Uh, so 1910, the old main building is, is built in that art, that craftsman style. Um, it's a, a real jewel of Buenaventura County. Um, in the 1920s, the cottages are built by the son of the family, uh, Austin Fierpont. Um, in the 50s, the east wing is built in, in two separate constructions. It's sort of a U-shape now. It was built originally as an L, and then another wing was added. Um, in the 60s, the real, you know, I, I don't think it's unfair to say sort of tragedy of the site is that the highway was built right in front of the property and cut off its immediate beach access. Um, in the 70s, the, the racket court was, the racket club was built. Now that is no longer part of the property, not part of the historic district, just mention it for historic uh, context. And in 1993, uh, as Chair noted, uh, the city designates the uh, Pierpont property as a historic district with those individually uh, uh, registered items, the main building and the 50s flat. The other structures are individually contributing. But as you know, uh, uh, Member Rubric, the, the, they are, several of them are individually eligible. They have not been named yet for, for any registry. You can advance, thanks. So one of the challenges of the site, um, and you can advance again, thanks. Uh, just real clearly kind of pointing out individually contributing versus uh, uh, contributing resource, or individual resource versus contributing resource. Um, one of the challenges of the site is to knit it back together as a, 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 in terms of continuity, uh, pedestrian uh, wayfinding, um, a color palette, uh, while keeping the individual artist, the architectural expression of, of each building. Each one represents, it seems like someone built a new building every 20 years or so, so there, there's a wide range of architectural styles and assembly types actually. Uh, the, techn the building technology changes on the site from building to building. You can advance, thanks. Again. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the, a real goal of the current ownership is to approach this property, as I said, to really breathe new life into it and, and to make it really sing again. Um, and that, uh, you know, They've, they've retained Page and Turnbull as historic preservation experts. Those folks have, have come in and done an analysis of the property. That, as, as staff notes, um, you know, came to a lot of the same conclusions, but they undertook their independent analysis, both of the existing property and our plans to rehabilitate in advance. So just a few shots of the property as it exists now. Um, these are images that are very close to what you saw uh, in, in uh, staff's presentation. Um, but I, I think I'd, and I'd just like to underscore that, you know, a lot of the effort here is to take buildings that uh, are so important to the community and rehabilitate them for the next hundred years. Um, and, and so really take buildings that are not being used to their full potential right now and really make them a prominent piece of the community again. Can advance. Um, so the handout that I, I gave you all is really a digest version of this slideshow that concentrates on materiality and characterization of the rehabilitated buildings. You can see that we're maintaining the existing construction for a building for the West Wing and likewise for the Bluff Building, very similar in construction. Um, these uh, wood slat expressions original to the building, uh, stucco infill. And really, we're just we're repairing, patching, and introducing a color palette that is only a slight change in what's there now, but, but, it, but it shares characteristics of the color palette across the property. Um, existing roof is composite shingle. Um, we're patching and repairing the roof on the west wing. It's in pretty good shape. Uh, the fascia needs repair and repainting at the eave of the roof. And then um, if you're a real Hawkeye, you'll notice that 
we're cleaning up some uh, their, their old uh, 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 a downspout uh, uh, <laughs> uh, punctures through the side of the building. That's really a vestige from when these areas were exposed patio sometime in the, since the building was built in the 70s, maybe the, uh, those patios were infilled and recaptured, but the scuppers were never removed. So, so it's really detailed stuff like that that we're, 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 we're getting to in advance. Thanks. Um, this uh, rendered elevation is reading a bit dark, but you can again see the color palette that we're intending. Um, there's a section right at grade along San Juan Road that's currently now a, a lattice work uh, a kind of fence that needs to be repaired, replaced. Um, so we're, we're, su we're, um, we're suggesting a, just a, a new painted wood uh, uh, and, and in part steel lattice um, assembly there. And again, the same kind of uh, just rehabbing and repairing, patching, new paint in advance, thanks. So the, the main building. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is the hardest uh, piece of the property and you can all appreciate. This building over the years has had a lot of changes, um, some less sensitive than others. Uh, the original uh, uh, building you can see in blue here and it was added onto in various increments uh, through the years. Now, some of those changes took place during the period of significance, period of significance, 1910 to 1966. Um, so there are some, some areas of the building that, like the Anna Kappa room, the extension of the sun room here on the west side um, that are important to the architectural character of the building as judged by Page and Turnbull. There are others, though, off here to the side, that's currently uh, functioning as a laundry facility and is really falling apart. It's just a tack on to the side of the building. We're, we're, we're proposing that it be removed and uh, that we rehabilitate that facade that's um, hidden right now, but the old facade is back there and in the old laundry room. When we go upstairs, uh, the proposal is to um, uh, build out new guest rooms. So the second floor of the old main building hasn't been used as a, as a guest room facility since the 1970s, I, th I think. So, um, so it's really reclaiming the second floor as guest rooms. Okay, you can advance, thanks. So here you can... You can see the first floor, and that red hash line is our proposed envelope for the first floor. And you can see in green what we're, what we're taking away. Really trying to get the building a little bit closer back to its original footprint. When we go upstairs, there's the original footprint of the old building. We're removing that. Um, as I said, that laundry facility that's uh, really in, t in bad shape. We're removing the egg crate um, uh, tr uh, trellis that was uh, ahistoric. It was probably built in the 60s. And we're removing a section of kitchen that was built out in the 60s and a connector connecting stair to the east wing. Um, these are not pieces of the building that you want <laughs> touching the main building. The stair itself is structurally deficient um, and, and kind of falling apart in our site assessment. Um, and it's ahistoric and it's not contributing to the performance of the property. We're also proposing to remove a small room that uh, was tacked onto the east side of the building. Okay, you can advance, thanks. Um, and here is our proposed plan, so upstairs uh, it's the original footprint of the building. 
We're keeping an existing mechanical well for uh, a mechanical equipment yard that's upstairs. It's going to be concealed by um, a screen wall. It really is a, is a reconfiguration of an existing condition all pointed out in the elevation. Downstairs, original footprint of the old main building. Here's that sunroom that was built out in the 19. 40s, I think it was, and a Kappa room, which we're keeping. The kitchen, it was again built out a little bit later, but we're pulling the facade back uh, closer to the footprint of the building as it would have been in the 1950s. And you can see on the second floor view. The, uh, the trellis that we'll pr propose rebuilding in the style of the original, um, post and beam uh, with second and tertiary structure and vines. We are going to try to preserve the great vines that are planted there right now. Uh, we've had an arborist come out and look at the condition actually of all the trees on the property, but they looked at the vines. Um, the arborist thought that with protection, the vines could be saved. Uh, our landscape architect was dubious, but we're going to try. Uh, nonetheless, construction, the construction site is a, is a hard place for plants, so we'll see. <laughs> um, but the vines probably don't have more than 10 or 15 years left anyway, was the assessment. In the short term, they're, they're viable. Was the, that was the arborist assessment. You can advance. So here's our rendering of the restored old main building, that rebuilt trellis, and a new section of trellis that wraps around to a dedicated restaurant entry. Um, the fenestration for the new restaurant entry is going to be very close in character to the fenestration and doors of the old main building right now. That mechanical equipment yard I mentioned is landing right up in this zone. Um, we're going to rebuild the same a screen wall in the same style that exists right now. Windows are, are a challenge. On the southwest side of the building, they really are not savable, They're especially on the second floor. Um, we need to replace them. Um, we're going to replace them with the same four over four, six over six, um, uh, divided light. But we're going to replace them with, they'll be, uh, they won't be operable. They're going to be much more acoustically performative for, uh, to meet Marriott tribute standards. One of, the, one of the difficult things through this project has been meeting contemporary performance standards, particularly with acoustics, um, versus a lot of the original construction. Or we can salvage the windows, especially on this east-facing side of the building, we will. Um, and a lot of those windows are in good shape. It's just the ones that, it's the ones that particularly have been subjected to saltwater winds and uh, harsh sunlight. It, it's, those, those are in bad shape. Board and batten along the ground floor of the building is mostly in good shape. Some of those need to be replaced um, and uh, brought material samples today to show you what we're proposing. Um, for example, the board and batten materials would be a composite material uh, that would match in character the existing wood. And then for the, up, for the upper floor, um, again, we, we have this challenge of um, the, the materials have, have been deteriorating really significantly, so the existing cedar shake. Um, actually, there are three or four different types of cedar shake currently on the building. Some of it shows signs of having been painted before. Uh, it was, there were patches installed at different times. So for example, the cedar shake over on this part of the building is different from what's on this side of the building, which is different from here. Um, and we're proposing um, both in terms of, well, all, in terms of material performance and 
increase fire resistance and increase maintainability to go back with a composite shingle material like this one. Uh, this is a Trex product or Hardy product. Um, and this isn't the color, but this would be the character of the material. Um, it's uh, really, again, in service of making the building, giving the building many more decades of life. Um, brick, existing brick would be repointed and this sample here is just to give, just to give you a character of the color. I, I, there are a few places where we're going to have to rebuild some brick um, uh, pony wall, uh, but they're very, they're very limited. Mostly it's just going to be a repointing. And then the roof is, the roof is a challenge. Um, so we're, the roof is currently asphalt shingle um, or composite shingle. We have to replace it um, in, in, in large part to get to the decking underneath because the whole building is going through a seismic upgrade. And so the roof, we need to re-engineer the roof to function as a single diaphragm. So we can't, we can't maintain any of the existing composite shingle, but we are proposing going back with new composite shingle for the entire roof. And then aluminum lattice. Um, Primarily deployed at this, there's a little building here, not a building, it's a little, uh, um, it's a, 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 a delivery spot for the kitchen. So there, it's, it's, um, there'll be a low wall planted, probably with cinder block, block behind it to, to block views into the kitchen delivery area. Um, and it had been a, a note from the last time we met that you guys definitely didn't want to see any like CMU walls. Uh, so we, we're going to, to clad it with an aluminum lattice and, uh, and plantings. Um, okay, you can advance, thanks. Uh, much of the same, keeping the existing brick here along these, on this low portion of the uh, rear side of the main building. Um, repairing board and batten, replacing most of the windows along this side. Okay, you can advance, thanks. The east wing. Again, we're making very, we're making very nominal architectural changes. Um, we're removing an existing faux brick that's along the bottom, uh, the f ground floor of the building, replacing it with stucco. It was, it, it was originally stucco or plaster when the building was first built, designed and built. Uh, patch and repair the existing roof, which is mostly in good condition. Um, windows and doors are going to remain as is. Um, there is one, uh, Consideration on the table, largely budget driven, again, because of the acoustics requirements of the brand that we, we have a, a swing door and a fixed glazed panel in lieu of a sliding door. Sliders are terrible for acoustic performance. So in talking that over with Paige and Turnbull, they, they made the point that, well, if you're keeping the framed opening the way it is, um, that comports with their standards or what they consider in compliance with the Secretary of Interior because you're keeping the framed opening as is. Potentially, if someone did want to restore the building back to its original condition, they could pop a, a slider back into that opening. We haven't made that decision yet, um, but it is on the table. I just wanted to be candid with you guys. It's something we're thinking about. Um, this is the existing uh, balcony that rings all the way around. Um, one architectural change that we're proposing is just introducing a little bit more transparency by opening up some space between those slats at the top half of that guardrail effectively and leaving it closed or leaving it solid at the bottom. Um, this was again a <coughs> discuss in detail with Paige and Turnbull. They felt like it was a reasonable modification that didn't uh, disrupt the architectural character in a way that would make the building for example, ineligible for listening. Patch and repair, 
the uh, board in Benton. Okay, thanks. This is, this is self-explanatory, I will add. I'll note that we're adding a stair. If you remember, we're removing that one stair at the main building that's a historic. We have to add a stair for egress purposes. Uh, the construction of the stair is going to be painted steel, intended to be very kind of minimalistic, uh, but and obviously code compliant uh, steel assembly. In advance, thanks. The 50s flat. Um, this is again a, a situation where we have a pretty light touch on the building. It's going to be our, our, the major moves that we're making is removing acrylic screen that's a historic and removing this section of uh, stucco wall that's also a historic. Okay, you can advance. So we'll be rebuilding that um, kind of a delicate wood um, uh, lattice work that's uh, part of the original construction of the building um, and just uh, rehabbing the uh, existing wood, wood siding. Um, one of the challenges of this property or this part of the property is accessibility and the uh, parking down there. Uh, we're having to do a pretty significant regrading job um, to create an accessible van space, an accessible route. Um, so it's a challenge, but we've figured out a way to do it. Okay, you can advance, thanks. The cottages, again, another light touch. We're really just um, cleaning up the exterior, paint, repair the roof, um, rehab some of the windows, replace the doors. Okay, thanks. You can advance. In the bluff building, very similar to the west wing. I think the notable exception at the bluff is that we're patching and repairing the existing wood uh, shingle roof. Uh, still has its original roof and talked to a roofer, thought it was feasible to patch and repair. So. Okay, you can advance, thanks. Um, just a couple of images to show design intent because we are replacing the, the failing um, stair next to the bluff uh, that serves the bluff building with again a relatively minimal, uh, delicate painted steel stair. That same character is gonna be repeated everywhere there's a new stair, so the, and, and the, these balconies are just to give you an idea of what our design intent would be there. So something, something quite lightweight, quite transparent. Um, the main building, and I, I should have mentioned this earlier, because we are uh, uh, introducing guest rooms again at that second floor, we're gonna have to have a second means of egress. So we are introducing a new stair, or introducing a new stair at the north end of the building and rebuilding the stair at the south end. Okay, you can advance, thanks. Yeah, and so, um, this brings us back to the site as a whole. Um, you know, this is a, a project that um, the ownership has been really committed to and they're really excited about. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a project that has so many constraints on it, uh, but there's such potential at the property that, um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's, it's really exciting. Um, yeah, I think that's a, that's what we're doing. So, eager to hear your thoughts. Great, thank you. Is this the appropriate time for questions of the applicant at this time? Um, I, so, in my opinion, um, this would be a good time to ask questions for, to clarify anything okay. or for more information, um, but not um, oh, then, exactly. We can bring him back up Correct. Later. The main question I had was, um, 
what percent complete are these drawings that we reviewed? Do you know? You, you reviewed 50% design development. 50%. Yeah. Okay. And those are, that's the, like it's April, late April of last year? Yeah, so but, I, but I think what we submitted for the planning application was not a full, a full DD set. We, we were also working on details in the background. There's a whole complement of systems, drawings, and, you know, mm -hmm. stuff that you, you wouldn't care about. Yeah. So, but what we were provided was the 50%. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think, can you speak to the landscaping at all? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So HRG, um, in that report, um, they did identify, I think mainly the most sensitive items were some of the coastal cypress that, that were, had st were still surviving on the property. Um, unfortunately, in the couple of the past windstorms, the property has lost a couple of those cypresses. So um, really, those were the, you know, from a landscape point of view, those were the jewels of the property. There is, there is one remaining. It's a very, it's a great tree. Um, there were, as I recall, the HRG report um, noted a general, you know, comprehensive character of the landscape. It didn't note it, that it was particularly, um, you know, there wasn't a particular part of it that was eligible for, for protection or special consideration. We're trying to take advantage of a lot of what's currently planted on the site. I mean, that's partly out of budget <laughs> concerns, frankly, but and trying to rehabilitate what's uh, what we're touching. Um, um, but the slope along San Juan Road needs to be stabilized, so that requires some planting. Um, and uh, along with an accessible route that leads from the property all the way to San Juan Road, that's a good <coughs> requirement. Excuse me. So that's going to be, so uh, there'll be landscaping attention there. Um, apart from that, I, I think the, the overwhelming idea is to, to be fairly minimal in the way that we approach landscape and take advantage of what, what's planted on site. Okay, thank you. Did we have any other, yeah? Well, thank you for the presentation. And uh, I think the site has been waiting 100 years for this, to someone to apply a holistic view of it. And, uh, and respect its historical qualities and yet try and uh, make it uh, both compliant to current codes and, and obviously useful to the, the owners. Um, in Jared's uh, staff report on page two, uh, he mentions the January 21st presentation that was given here. And he says that the Historic Preservation Committee was presented a conceptual design study for potential renovations to the Pierpont Inn and provided feedback to the applicant including. So what we had said at that time was, mm -hmm. we would like to make sure that when the applicant team design, uh, <clears throat> develops its design, <clears throat> that the historic character of the buildings can be clearly identified and distinguished from one another. Mm -hmm. And I think your biggest problem there is the main building. Uh, that seems to have gone continual uh, renovation since, you know, since it was built. And uh, I was looking at the uh, southwest elevations on some of the drawings that were sent to us where the Anna Kappa room has kind of landed like a spaceship next to this 1910 building and attached itself. Mm -hmm. um, and it now is of historical character because it's an add-on to something that's been there even longer. So I get all that. But um, could you maybe walk us through an example of that or something where You've, um, you've tried to make a distinction between the, the various uh, layers in this, uh, this building? Yeah, actually, if you could step back in the slides um, to those uh, plan views of the old main building. Um, let's see. Yeah, slide seven. Yeah, yeah, so it's a great question, Reverend Mueller. Um, you know, there are, <laughs> there are several spaceships, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> They've all ended at different times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, uh, for example, the one that I, um, that I just immediately, my first visit to the site, I was like, well, we just got to take down this egg crate part, uh, trellis thing. It's terrible. It doesn't make any sense to the building. Um, over here, this laundry room that I mentioned, um, uh, similarly, um, you can tell just from a, even as a layperson, you can st see that it, it's, it doesn't want to be part of the building. So those to me were no-brainers. When you go inside the, the building though, you know, th this old captain's room, um, we've talked to 
people who remember, you know, going to parties in the old captain's room. Sure. And, and the same with the sunroom. Even though uh, this, the extension of the sunroom, um, they've really become uh, so closely uh, associated with the building itself. You know, the Anna Kappa room, um, I'll, uh, I'll reserve judgment on its uh, <laughs> extraterrestrial origin, but, but, it's, um, but nonetheless, it is part of that Austin's restaurant that is such an important part of the history of the, of the building. Um, now, there, is a, there was an expansion of the, rest, uh, the restaurant uh, kitchen and it's uh, really a fairly enormous commercial kitchen facility right now. Um, the, the property now has catering capabilities out of the Vickers estate or the Tiggy house, actually. So the, the needs for this kitchen are much more modest. And it, and it presented the opportunity to say, hey, let's peel that, that kitchen back to something closer to the original envelope of the building and remove this clearly a historic section out here. So these were judgment calls that we had to make through the design process and and in that process we were checking back with Paige and Turnbull and uh, you know with review periods to say what are your thoughts about that. Um, so yeah it's it, it was it, it was a set of judgment calls. Well uh, my question wasn't so much about what you plan to remove mm -hmm. uh, that's obviously going to have an effect it was more about what remains, and mm -hmm. to the extent different sections of the main building now uh, have been accreted at different times, uh, is it going to be obvious to somebody walking by? Too obvious? Not obvious enough? I'm, I'm trying to get a sense of how much uh, effort uh, you may be invested in, in identifying these, these components of the parts that you're planning to keep. Um, uh, Makes sense. I'm, so, uh, I'm sorry well, if I don't know. <laughs> well, okay. I mean, you could yeah. paint them all different colors or something. That would be just a little too much. But uh, there are various architectural things uh, that may be already there. I think you're going to replace the, you know, the the white batten, uh, uh, and that looks like that would offset the the Anna Kappa room somewhat. Uh, and uh, there are other small details that could be added uh, that wouldn't be too significant uh, to, you know, to 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 misrepresent it, but at the same time would identify it to the eye as a separate uh, construction at a separate time in that building. We will, um, we will take that under consideration. I, 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 I'll say in, in general, we have looked at, um, let's see. So, if, so we're exposing this old um, edge of the, the, the old envelope edge of the building here, um, and it's not, uh, you can actually go into the kitchen and see the old original board and batten. Um, yeah. So, so in some ways, we're exposing it, rehabilitating it. We're we're, we're putting in new fenestration doors. Um, yeah. But uh, but more in the intent uh, in the intent of of preservation or renovation, and not architectural distinction. I guess right. you're because I, I it seems like you've been really uh, diligent in, in having a light touch on the materials so that they correspond to what was right. uh, original. Yeah. Uh, and I'm asking to kind of go, you know, across yeah. purposes to that so that some of these things are identified as different parts of the uh, uh, overall, you know, construction over the yeah. years. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a really good point um, in uh, service of not being a historicist or being kind of slavishly trying to recreate the past and right. and you're right we can do that through design details um and uh but yeah we'll, we'll look at that facade with that uh comment in mind um because we could we could easily uh yeah adjust the board and batten or 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 reverse it to or, you know yeah we, yeah nothing <clears throat> nothing difficult or expensive right. just something uh, to, to make the eye kind of make it a, a separate entity when yeah. you look at it yeah. i think if it's going to be an historical building then people visiting it should get a sense that it's you know it's got different history and different pieces of it yeah. and yeah and it won't be uh covered up or or you know hidden somehow <laughs> okay yeah i, I appreciate that we'll, we'll look at doing that Okay, Thanks. thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. I was sort of obtuse in the first time you asked the question. I have a question about the um, 
Mainly uh, the main building. Mm -hmm. And then um, you have the existing wood shake shingles with replaced with a composite. Yeah. What percentage of shingles do you think will have to be replaced? All of them. <laughs> well, it, it, <laughs> I think the fireproofing is important. Yeah. It, it, it will be fire, there will be more fire resistant. Mm -hmm. um, uh, not fireproof, but, um, but uh, uh, you know, as I, as I think I mentioned, there, there are like several different types of shingles actually when you get down, when you really mm -hmm. take a close look. And a lot of them are in very poor repair. I th I'm afraid that if we tried to sort of patch or, or just replace them in, in, in pieces, we'd get a really disjointed appearance, um, wouldn't serve it. And the cottages still have their old shake shingle roofs? Uh, oh, those are composite shingle. Those are composite? Believe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Since you have to take the roof off the main building, yeah. could you do the sh shake shingle look? Because it was probably originally a shake shingle roof. It, I'm, I'm sure I mean, that it I was. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I don't, could that could it be replaced rather than being replaced with the, you know, the, the composite, the, our traditional it composite? Could. Is we, there that sort of shake shingle look? Well, I don't those, know if that's... Those, those products are available, um, mm -hmm. a kind of faux shake shingle I think they roof. cost more, probably. They always cost more. <laughs> they always cost more. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can investigate that. I, 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 I'll, you know... I know you guys don't like hearing people complain about budget, but it is a well, consideration. Um, but yes, it's yeah, something we, we can investigate. Yeah, we understand that. Um, yeah, there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot here, and I'm really glad somebody wants to take care of this property. Well, they're sitting right over there. Yes, yeah, I'm really, it's a huge undertaking. Um, I think, did we, any other? I think that's it for questions. And the, actually, I do have another question yeah. about the same with the board and batten. Yeah. It's obviously you can. There's some on the non-exposed. Probably the non-ocean side is probably in better shape than than the ones that are on the ocean side. But do you it's, know what percentage has to be replaced with with the board and batten? We've given the contractor an allowance of 25 to 30 percent. Okay. Um, mostly it's at the ground level, or it's close to the ground where it's, it's moisture damage. Mm -hmm. um, it's not so much that salt and sun damage. And that's a wood that's much more easy to, you can get much closer in appearance with a, like a, a composite uh, product. I have one question for, I believe it's the east wing, I want to say, the U-shaped building, yeah. where the stone is being removed yeah. from the ground story. So, that it, you're going back with a stucco finish on mm -hmm. that. Is that a smooth stucco or? Uh, fairly smooth. I mean, it won't be like Mexican style. Right. It'll it'll That's be it'll have a it. no yeah, no. It'll understand. have a, a fairly smooth uh, pebbly or very you know not pebbly but um, sort of sandpapery finish. I think you had one. Yeah, yeah I have a, a question about the the shingle siding because here in the picture you've got. It's like the shape shingle style, and then you've brought this one that's really straight across, and I'm just yeah. curious. Yeah, does it have kind of a live edge? Yes, they're, 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 with these products, there's an option to do that kind of staggered edge. The, the sample that we got and we're able to bring today has that straight cut. I just feel like but, it's the, yeah, it's the, what makes that hotel, you know, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I appreciate that, and, and we'll, we'll look at that um, that option. I mean, it's always a finish option for these products, so yeah, thank you. Any other? Uh, sorry, uh, could you me. speak to the new windows a little Don't bit? Be sorry, yeah. Sorry. I don't want to talk about <laughs> yeah, the, the windows, yeah, the, the what they're made of and, and all that. They will be uh, insulated glass units. I would like to do uh, divided actual divided light but IGUs for so we get both the acoustic performance and the and the aesthetic performance um, we looked at uh, rehabilitating as many of the windows as we can and adding a what's called a jockey sash on the inside which is you know just an acoustical treatment um, but for some of those windows uh, they just can't be saved so yeah um, having a, as much of a wood-like appearance on the outside 
um, they'll probably be vinyl, but the, the, those products have really come a long way. And I, I'm conf we don't have a spec yet, I guess I'm, dan I'm dancing around. The, the, we don't have a product selected yet, mm -hmm. but um, we do know of several manufacturers that make windows that will conform to our expectations there. Um, they won't be operable. Again, just an acoustic, the acoustic performances make that pretty, make that pretty cost prohibitive. But they'll, in appearance, be very close to what's there right now. Okay. I'm sure you'll be back. Any other questions right <laughs> now? <laughs> yeah. no. Not at the moment. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Ed, yeah, this was absolutely. Really I was wishing I had this all week. <laughs> Trying to unpack the plans yeah. and then this, this yeah. is great. Yeah, this is great. Okay, good. Thank um, you. And I believe with that we can move on to public comment. Um, do we have any members of the public who would like to address us on this item? We do have one speaker, and that is Stephen Schaefer. Do you, you prefer the podium, oh, don't you? The mic up there. Oops. Okay, wherever you. Sorry about that. Thank you, Levi. Okay. Whoops. Is that on? Okay. Um, it would be a shame to let the next century of the Pierpont be the result of value engineering, um, and I don't think you can review this project without a tour. Um, the Pierpont is one of the most significant buildings in Ventura, and as such, a significant Ventura landmark. The HPC is the board tasked with protecting and preserving our significant landmarks. It is your purview to set a high bar for preservation. The public expects you to pressure to, to preserve the Pierpont, especially in light of the damage done to the Pierpont uh, by unpermitted interior demolition and unpermitted exterior alterations over the years. The proposed plan needs to rise to a preservation, to a higher level of preservation and material integrity as befits a resource of this level of significance. The project should be reviewed on site with an HPC tour of the district because especially because the upper offices are still unaltered and it's very hard to tell from this. Um, the level of detail is so critical and probably another HPC review while rehab is underway to avoid mission creep. On page 40 of the Page and Turnbull resource assessment from April 2022, Page and Turnbull recommended that the project team continue to work with a qualified historic architect and preservation professionals through at least permitting for Secretary of the Interior standard compliance. This is not a project that should be operating under least recommended processes. The current plan is not categorically exempt under CEQA. It should be a mitigated negative declaration. The plan should come back to HPC again for further per review because many of these things, like the windows, are not like for like. Strict compliance with the standard should be a mitigation. There will be many improvements in this plan, and the seismic should also comply with the Secretary of the Interior standards and should also be part of the mitigations. Improvements to the historic fabric should be credited as mitigations. Um, and maybe even something like replanting cypress that have been, uh, that are no longer there. Please consider maintaining the involvement of preservation professionals like historic architects and the avoidance of alterations or materials that do not maintain the highest level of preservation and a rejection of changes based on cost saving measures. And should lean, this should lean heavily on the historic building code to maintain as much original fabric and on the main building as possible. Oddly, the new restaurant entry is a, and change of use is probably the most Secretary of the Interior uh, standard compatible. But I'm really worried about some of the unaltered parts finally becoming altered rather than restored. I'm not sure the building will be National Register eligible after these proposed changes. No original fabric will be left. No shingles, no wavy glass, no, his, no wooden windows. Again, the public expects you to force the applicant to do the preservation project right and not cheap. If you approve this tonight, you're approving vinyl windows. Thank you. Thank you. We have no additional public speakers. Excellent, thank you so much. And um, with that, I believe we can close the public comment period and 
begin deliberation. Um, there, uh, at the, sometimes the, the, you'll get the opportunity for an applicant to respond to anything that uh, they heard during the public. Um, and so uh, I would like to provide the opportunity if you would like to respond to the public comment. Um, I, I really appreciate the input from, uh, uh, from the public uh, commenter and um, appreciate the concerns that he brings forward for the committee's consideration. Um, my understanding, I'm not a historic preservation architect, so forgive me if I misunderstand, but because of the significant interior alterations that took place even before current ownership of the property, the, the, even the main building would not be eligible, in my understanding, for national listing um, in any case. But that's a, just an asterisk. I mean, I, I think the larger point about cost versus integrity of, of restoration or preservation is a, is a separate conversation. So, I, I, again, you know, these, these are difficult uh, issues to weigh. So, appreciate it. Great. Thank you so much for your response. And I believe now we will close public comment and move on to deliberation. We would like to um, begin. I think we do need a site tour. I, I'm really familiar with this building, but I have to say I haven't been down there for a couple years. I think it would be important to walk through and um, really, really see what, what they propose changing. I'm really uncomfortable with the shingles and the vinyl windows and the vinyl uh, doors on the uh, mid-century East Building as well. Yeah. I. Um I would just, I want to say that I'm, I very much support the project in mm -hmm. general. I think overall there's a lot of good things happening and I think that mm -hmm. it's possible for the project to comply with the standards. I think that it is clear in the Page and Turnbull report that continued input of a historical architect or architectural historian is they're basing their finding of compliance with the standards on the fact that that would continue to happen. So without that, I feel very uncomfortable approving the project without that being, it's, it's, it's weird because it's not, it wouldn't be a mitigation measure if, you know, a categorical exemption is being pursued. So I don't know how that could be required. Maybe we could condition it, but I, I think that's something we need to discuss. Um, because I think it's possible for the project to comply, but I also think we're looking at 50% design drawings right now, and so also mm -hmm. those are conceptual, but it's still conceptual, like, and that's what Page and Turnbull's findings are based on, not a final, um, not final plans. So um, those are some of my concerns. I mean, and then, you know, obviously I do have concerns about the materials and some of the, some of the nitty gritty design, but it's, for me, it's really more about the larger picture of um, how we ensure that the project remains in compliance. Like, I'm not gonna say I don't believe the project can comply. I think it can comply and it's on its way, but there's no way right now to ensure that it will comply um, unless we condition it somehow at this point. Um, and I think there's no way to say that this project does not have potentially significant impacts under CEQA. That would just be my, my opinion about that. Um, there's definitely potentially significant impacts. So, um, yeah, open to any, any other thoughts. Um, I would love to do a site review. I am not familiar with the property as, I mean, I'm very familiar with the area. I live right by there. i would never been deep into the property though. And I'm, my concern would be with removing of so much of the structure, ensuring that, I know you say some of the historic facade is still there, but what do we know what that historic facade looked like? Do we have pictures of it? Are you recreating that exactly? I mean, I would want to know more about that aspect of how it's going to be recreated after removing all the stuff that was added after like over the years. But. Chair, maybe I could um, 
help things go along a little bit. I mean, this obviously super complicated, one of the most complicated kind of projects that you're gonna come across because we're talking about uh, multiple buildings where any one of these could come by itself and you know have an, a couple hour conversation about. I think, um, and we've, you know, this already been looked at uh, for the past eight years. Um, you know, one approach would have been for everything to come in and then have it peer reviewed by a, a historic consultant and and come in with those type of things. So, like, where they have an historic consultant on their team um, is is you know it's not required. So for that component, there you know it should be a certain amount of comfort level there where we could end up going. You could for a project like this. Um, you could have continuous public hearings on every decision because there's going to be hundreds of decisions made um, about the project. So, uh, having you know a member of the team that's going to continue to be a part of the team, and I agree. I think staff would recommend that an historic consultant like Paige and Turnbull, um, yeah, be required to be a part of the uh, the team, um, not just through uh, permit um, construction plan permitting. But also, you know, to ensure that the the work on site is being done consistent with the plans as well. Um, but uh, and I agree that uh, historic preservation committee should um, be able to to have a site visit. Um, but I would try to um, avoid getting to a position where it's we're on some sort of kind of cycle of coming back for every decision that gets made. Overall, I'm glad this project is happening. I'm glad somebody wants to steward this, mm -hmm. this yeah, property, yeah. finally. Um, is there a way to um, identify the, um, the areas that we would like to see addressed uh, in terms of either detailed plans or some sort of feedback? Uh, I think materials, shingles, you know, uh, window materials and so yeah, forth. Yeah, because the other thing is like at 50%, like a lot of the questions we have, you know, like we asked about windows and then yeah. we don't know yet. So yeah. it's like we can't approve, we can't just approve it. Like that, that's clear to me, but I mean, I want to support moving forward in some way. So I think, um, I think that going out there would be helpful and walking through all these changes on site would be helpful. Um, but again, I don't know when exactly we should do, like because certain, I mean certain things are just unknown right now. Like we're gonna go on site and ask what the windows are gonna be and if we don't know the answer, right, yeah. that's a concern. So, and I think that um, You'd have to be it seems like we're all in agreement that having a qualified it's professional not. involved through is necessary so um, I don't want to stall the process but I'm not exactly sure where we go from here and chair I'll just weigh in on on the idea of a site tour um, it's gonna be extremely challenging with the Brown Act and you all will not be able to do this in one visit um, so scheduling that would be extremely difficult and time consuming so and I would just you know ask that you kind of ask yourself what while yes it would be interesting and, and great how much how what value that may hold when a qualified historic expert being continually involved in the project may hold or carry more value throughout the life of this project so Right, and as Jared said, if you want to move the project forward with a recommendation that a condition of approval be uh, applied that a qualified historic expert be a part of the project, as Jared pointed out, not just through permitting, but through construction and completion of the project, that would be forwarded on to the community development director who has the, uh, you know, the prerogative to include that as a condition of approval. Staff would be in support of a condition of that nature. Um, to your other point, I would say uh, if you have specific concerns such as materials, I know the windows are, are 
have been brought up. If it's something you can be comfortable with, and then, but you're not comfortable with that material, that's also a recommendation you can move forward. Uh, recommendation of approval with the recommendation that materials for new windows be of a XYZ. Mm -hmm. That is also the type of uh, recommendations you can move forward with that may give you a certain level of comfort mm -hmm. that can be included in a resolution and have some teeth. Okay. So rather than necessarily saying, oh, we don't like vinyl, we'd like to see you come back with something else Perhaps uh, if you can, if you would be comfortable with a different material, just suggest yeah. that. Okay, um, and would it be possible for the purpose of, like just the site visit discussion, is it possible for that to be a public meeting or no? We would have to do it as a public yeah. agendized meeting. Yeah. Um, and I would have to get more information as far as how we would arrange such a thing. Um, obviously, um, yeah. It would be a challenge, okay. as you can imagine. Okay, so I guess we should, I think we should discuss, um, you know, if we feel comfortable m making some kind of a motion that would approve the project without going on a site visit. I mean, I definitely would want to, like, I will go out there on my own time and then mm -hmm. compile a whole, like, then we'll have to see the project again, though, because we will have to have mm -hmm. a conversation to answer the questions that will come out of that type of... Yeah, I think whatever we decide here is going to be conditional. Yeah. Uh, if only because we haven't seen all the drawings and yeah. because they're not all done, you know. And uh, I think in the past, our committee has been very reluctant to sign off on drawings we haven't seen. So um, our, our, our enthusiasm is, is high, but our, our approval has to be conditional. Um, I think we have a question about materials. Um, and I think that you know, the idea of having uh, a uh, restoration specialist working on their team as these drawings are developed that we haven't seen mm -hmm. uh, would, would be an appropriate thing. It will keep them from maybe having to come back here so often and us from having to organize a public meeting on their site. Yeah. So I would be a, in favor of a conditional approval on those bases. And, you know, materials, window uh, you styles. Some input on the materials. I think we want a list of that and try and be specific. But uh, that plus a recommendation that somebody reviews this as part of their, their team uh, will expedite their, their efforts, I think, rather than uh, have to hold everything up uh, while it gets on our agenda somehow. I'm also wondering if we condition the um, involvement of a qualified professional, if we could also, I mean, it's not only that that person's reviewing it, but it's that the project is remaining in compliance and I guess we're made aware, aware of that. I mean, you know, it's not just that somebody's looking at it. Um, so, I think that would be important. Well, yeah, I, um, I think that any, any person that they would have on their team to review these issues that we're conditioned, conditioning on uh, would have to work with the uh, Community Development Department and our staff rather than try to agenda some meeting for us. And I would just mention, uh, uh, in, along that vein, if you wanted to make a condition that uh, you know, there are benchmarks throughout this entire process. There, there, there can be, um, while you can approve a historic design review conditionally tonight, uh, you could do that with condition that not only a qualified historic professional be involved throughout the life of the project, that, but at, you know, 80%, 75%, it gets, staff brings it back for, uh, you know, a periodic review uh, and, and so on. So that's also, an idea that's within your, your realm. Is that a schedule the staff can, can work to? I mean, we're, we're not trying to add to their, their uh, lifestyle here. I don't think we would, I don't think it would be an envisioned as rehashing the entire thing. I mean, you would still be uh, conditionally approving the historic design review. It would just be a, uh, as, as a condition of that approval that it comes back before this um, for, um, you know, that clearance if you will. And that can be worked out in the fine tuning of the wording of the condition itself. Well, I think I'm willing to delegate the um, decision on materials 
between the staff, uh, a qualified professional, and the applicant. I don't think that's for us to get involved at that level of detail. And we don't want to have it set up so that it, it uh, slows down their project. Uh, but it would be incumbent on you guys to deal with whatever they come up with uh, to review uh, and, and verify. And if, if there are still questions, I guess we'd have to deal with it. Yeah, I think that's um, why it would be important to have the benchmarks for it to come back to us at certain points. You yeah. Know? I, I would like the materials to come back to us, but I would like a professional's input on maybe some alternatives to, like, I mean, this is only one option of shingle, one option of, you know, window, maybe a few more options that we can discuss and see what might fit the historic, uh, you I, know, uh, category uh, better. Committee member Rubric. Um, I think it would be important for them to decide on it, um, uh, it but maybe there's a, um, a sharing of the thought process of how they got there. Um, because if you're getting to 75, 80 percent, you know, those decisions have been made because um, it's going to affect other parts of, uh, of the project. Um, it, it's kind of already past the point of um, between choosing between like, uh, you know, this kind or that kind. But um, uh, it does definitely sound like it's important for the, the committee to understand how they got there. And so, you know, that would be um, part of that check-in. Um, I think they're hearing tonight what the preferences are and, you know, what the committee would like to see uh, if possible. And so I don't think that's been lost on them. Are we able to, um, if we just hypothetically, I'm just trying to think about our options. If we were to continue the item until 75% drop, like what, how does that affect their process? Like are they able to continue to move forward and then we, s we require the involvement of the historical architect and then see it again at 75%, like I just don't know if I feel comfortable approving the project tonight, so I'm trying to figure out what the other options are. Sure, and, and Unfortunately, the, the community development director, who would be the final decision um, on, the, on this uh, type of review, will not be able to render that decision until a recommendation has been given by the Historic Preservation Committee. So if it's continued, it will not be able to move forward to the next hearing um, without that recommendation. If it's, oh, it's the next hearing body that has to see it? Correct. The HBC is issuing a recommendation uh, to the community development director who will either approve or deny the application. So nothing can happen if we don't, if we don't approve, like in terms of the, the pro In terms of the process and the, and the project being entitled, correct. But it's hard to approve a project when you're not seeing the whole project. So I'm just, this is like normally with a project of this scale, we're looking for approvals at 50% design. Sure, and I can definitely appreciate the challenge uh, that you're all in. Uh, it may be uh, worthwhile just uh, you may be asking the applicant what uh, time frame in which maybe they could get um, more complete drawings that they could bring before this committee. Um, they would have better information uh, than how long that would take for us and how much delay that would cause the project. Um, so that may be something that you may want to okay. invite them to discuss. Um, would so, we, yeah, well, we're, if we're requesting information like that, like, is it possible to get more information about the like the number of windows that would be completely replaced as opposed, I know you, the, the goal is to repair yeah. if possible, but are we That's looking at 1% repair, 90% yeah. repair? Like how many are we talking that are going to be straight up, you know, replaced, you know, it, or is that number not known? Like, I, I, you know, I would reopen it. Again, yeah. Public comment again so we can communicate directly. Okay. Okay. Um, in answer to an earlier question, we can submit far more complete drawings tomorrow 
we've been working on this project in the meantime. It's not like mm -hmm. we put our pencils down right. last Right, because these are like a year old. These right. Well, yeah. April. Okay. But, but these are the drawings that were submitted with the planning application. Okay. So in terms of continuity, we didn't want to we didn't want to muddy waters by, by I mean, we've, we've been issuing drawing sets since yeah. then. So yeah, we can provide much more detailed drawings. Drawings that um, show, for example, the, the, in more detail, the staircase steel work, the, you know, stuff like that. The windows, yes, we've identified the ones that need to be replaced. Um, as I described in, in general terms, largely on the southwest exposure of that main building. Um, there are windows on the north and east side of the building that are in pretty good shape and we can repoint and we can we can reuse those windows um, so those are identified in the drawings um, the new drawings the most recent ones okay <laughs> i'm okay. sorry the ones no, that you I, don't I have mean, I, no, I <laughs> no that's no the thank process you process is like clunky so i yeah but i think we, I, we need to have like some more answers to some of these questions, I think, to approve. I mean. I agree. Unfortunately, sorry. <laughs> um. Chair Brazil, can I? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see applicant, um, if we, uh, we're, we're able to uh, continue the item to a date certain, and we have these once a month. That would be March, what is it? 16th. Oh, no, March 16th. I mean, is that enough time to uh, put a package together that's um, answering, uh, providing enough information from what you're hearing tonight um, that would... So Yes, in answer to your question, Jared, yes, a month is enough time to do whatever we need to do. So there'll be a month that we're at the hearing. It really only gives you probably a week and a half, two weeks to put it together so that we can package it up for the public hearing. But, but the most important thing for, um, for ownership, and for mm -hmm. the applicant, would be being responsive to, mm -hmm. to what you guys need to see. So, um, yeah, I think... Uh, so that would be important for us to like just pull it out exactly, um, you know, any details that we feel we need to see or answers to any specific questions. Well, I mean, we've mentioned windows, but that's a pretty big subject and main building. Yeah, like um, we'll need to know which windows are being replaced. Um, would, and also you mentioned the new windows would be non-operable. Mm -hmm. um, for acoustic, are the original ones operable? Mm -hmm. So we're so they are operable now, and they would be switched out with non-operable. Is that those windows that need to be replaced mm -hmm. would be replaced with non-operable okay. windows? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the windows that are main uh, that, that are remaining and mm -hmm. are in acoustically sensitive locations, like the facades facing the highway, mm -hmm. would be fitted with a jockey sash on the inside. So on the inside, though. Yeah. yeah. So what I would recommend if we want to go with this approach is that we look through building by building and identify the things that we want to see on the next set of plans so that we can provide a that. And then that way when we see the next set of plans, we can work through and provide, you know, if we see windows, if we see the windows that are chosen and we don't like the windows, then we're going to have a discussion about direct feedback about what we think the windows should should be or you know so i think if we want to go with this approach i think we should work through the actual buildings well because could it be could it be done by category i mean we could say windows and uh, anything where there would be windows uh, you know in in plan to be replaced we, we would get details on that we could say doorways and similar, or we could say roofing, or we could say uh, cladding on the on the uh, vertical surfaces. Um, would that be enough to get us the drawings we need, or are we going to go through you know page by page here and try and work it out building by building? Are the only windows being replaced the ones on the main building? Yes. Um. 
the, on the 1910. Yes. The, the Except for the sliding glass door. Situation. Well, right now we're maintaining those sliding glass doors, and we're actually talking with Marriott about the kind of their sort of red line on acoustical performance, and and obviously, you know, ownership would like to avoid if we can reuse the existing doors that we we do that. So uh, uh, there are some indications that we'll be able to, to do that. So, um, okay. But yeah. do is that the is that I thought these were sliding doors on the east east building exactly. Okay. That's right. And so you're not repl wait. These are being replaced or not? They're not. Some are, right? Some are, some, some are? No, no, they're they're not. They're they're being reused. I mentioned the possibility that okay. we we may look at a, a replacing them for acoustical performance. Okay. I just right, wanted right. to be yeah. candid with right, the Right, no, you've been very transparent. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> um the facades that are gonna be restored after the rooms are removed on the outside. Is there detail in the plans of what those are gonna look like? Like the, the restored part, comparing it to what it was in the past, or? We don't know exactly what it was in the past. Yeah. We don't have that documentation. But we do have elevations and details that show what it will look like when it's rehabbed, when it's renovated. Okay. Did, did you go off of old pictures at all, or by chance? We, we do, when, when, when they're available. The mm -hmm. um, but this is not a restoration project. This is a rehabilitation project. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And I think that's, like, really why it's important, you know, the, I think regardless of when we see the design again, we will condition the, the involvement of someone like Paige and Turnbull because like there is a lot of leeway in the standards. And so it's like, if you really can't save something, then that's, it's, it's reasonable to move on to a different option. But, you know, the threshold for really being able to save something or not is subject to opinion. So that's why having the right opinions involved is important, I think. So I think that'll be a condition when it, you know, whenever we do approve. Um, but I guess I would say, um, I mean, anything, like we, we need to understand the, the amount of quantity of things that are being removed and exactly what they're being replaced with, essentially. So whether that's windows or doors or cladding, we need to understand what's being removed and what it's being replaced with. I would, that's, would be my guidance, yeah. And it's like there, it's there kind of right now, but it's just the exact amounts and like, you know, a few detail, you know, like the windows are very, I think very important, um, obviously, but yeah, the more, I think the more detail, the better, and then understanding the amounts because it's I mean I, maybe you can't quantify exactly every single window but if we could have a good understanding of which ones you know we think need to go and what really what they're being replaced with too gotcha. and then like a final decision on the um, the shingle I think mm -hmm. is going to be important if you, you can do the live edge mm -hmm. so that's wholesale replacement on that main building yeah <laughs> um, any other like doing wood shingles is that an option it is but like was that thought or was that considered and this was the one that was decided on it was considered um uh, <laughs> to, to the commenters earlier the point it, it's very expensive mm -hmm. um well, and it's a fire hazard too, unless they're fireproof or yeah, and it's possible treated. to get fireproofed. You know, fire treated wood kind of shingles like they yeah. tend to yeah, you know, tends mm -hmm. to be a pretty nasty process with arsenic and stuff. But um, you know, the, the uh, composite shingle um, is a much more easily maintainable and replaceable product, and um, uh, and and their cost their cost advantages. So yeah, that, that I mean that, those were the drivers. 
mm -hmm. on, on that decision. Are those shingles original that are on there? So on the main building, there are about three or four different eras of shingles on the right. main building. Yeah. And the <laughs> oldest ones are the ones in worse condition. Sure. Um, the, the, there's a, a suite called the Pierpont Suite at the upper floor. Those are the most recent wood shingles added to the building uh, in the 80s. But right. So the problem is, what, what do you work to? Do you replace the most recent ones? Or do you replace the oldest ones and, you know, in terms of material and, and texture and so forth? And uh, that, that could lead to a, you know, a lot of, that's why, I, you know, an expert on historical uh, restoration would be helpful to be able to, you know, work ahead of this and not, uh, not leave it to uh, likes of us to, to try and help to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, and to your point, I mean, the, this, the, we, we did discuss this point with Paige and Turnbull, and, and, and we kept coming around to the fact that this is not a historic res uh, restoration project. Right. Um, and, um, the, you know, we talked with our expert about the composite shingles who felt that this was a, a reasonable uh, replacement for original cladding that was in keeping with the architectural yeah. character. I think building. if we could know if you're going with the straight or a live edge, that's, I mean, to me that makes, a f I do understand if the material that's there needs to go, you know, we want to know what it's being replaced with, not generally, but actually. And then one of the things I remember looking at in the plans, which I think you clarified when you gave your presentation, so it's probably on the new plans, mm -hmm. is just some of the stair details like were there wasn't really deep it wasn't really like fleshed out it seems more general so just a you know more detail on what those actually look like much more detail in the drawing in the okay. most current drawing set you were, again you're looking at a 50 percent design development set where those kinds of details are where not. are you at now we're at about 50 percent cds okay so uh, really far along in, in detailing. Um, not too far along to change some materials and change some window specs and that kind of thing, okay. for sure. Um, but, you know, we can, we can definitely come back with window specifications. Um, so, as you say, you, you know exactly, in the case of replacement, the product that's going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, is in the Page and Turnbull, uh, the report mm -hmm, from last year, yeah, is, that, is there a discussion? Of, of they do a what, standards what the, compliance yeah. review. Okay, okay. Yeah, and so they basically say it's in compliance, but as you guys progress, continue to okay. keep it in compliance. So that's like That's where, where maybe at. some stewardship yeah. could, could help. Yeah. Okay. So, um, it's a tough project. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really hard project. I mean, it's a, it's a really significant building for our city. So, I want to do the right thing. Are we able to, um, I'm just wondering, like, if things come up after the meeting, are we able to communicate that through you guys, the applicant? Like, hey, I'm looking at this specific thing, and can you? Can you sure. Staff will be in continual communication with the applicant until uh, this goes to a final decision and even afterwards. Uh, so, so sure, that, that's definitely possible. It, 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 if I could just weigh in, it sounds like there's at least some level of consensus as far as what the items of concern are, which I think is a step in the right direction. Uh, and I think we've kind of read those off and I've taken some notes and I know Jared has as well. It sounds like windows uh, and then obviously cladding changes where we're removing things, what's gonna be going there. We want more detail on that. Uh, uh, materials in general. Uh, want a level of certainty as far as what's what's being uh, proposed there. Um, shingles uh, also, and then the stair details. It sounds like a lot of those things, if, and don't let me misspeak, uh, are kind of already flushed out with, with how far along you guys have already gotten. Um, so it seems like the, the, what makes the most sense is possibly a continuance to a date certain, 
have them, uh, they can submit the updated drawings to staff, we can evaluate those and then package that up for uh, to come back before this committee. Uh, I do, I will say, I think March may be a little bit aggressive uh, just for, for staff. Uh, um, so I, I would recommend maybe the April meeting um, just to ensure that everything, because I'd hate for something to happen and then us have to continue it once again and then do this unnecessarily again. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we're at the point where we can do a conditional approval that'll make any difference to where we are at this point. But uh, something where we have more information by a date certain and can act on it, that would be the best we can do to, to help move this along. Um, is there any benefit to um, having, I don't even know if it would be possible, but is there a on our end, do we think there's a benefit to having Paige and Turnbull, I mean, not that they need to produce a report at the level that they did on, on these drawings, because there's a lot of information they would not have to rehash, but I mean, having them look at the updated drawings would be beneficial. I mean, we're gonna look at them, so, but, you know, more certainty is better, mm -hmm. so. And they're familiar with the project? That would be beneficial, I think. Um, I don't know what form that would take on your end, but I'm just putting it out there. Yeah, if we could get some sort of expert input on this, in terms of what's available, what's what's the best choice, uh, that would help us. We won't have to figure that out, or we'd have you know some expert guidance on that. Is April doable on your end? <laughs> It is. I mean, or do yeah. you want more time? Basically, do you want more time is the well, question. Well, I, I think. we can continue it to, you know. I think they have the drawings. They just have to pull out the, the, right, the right parts of them. We didn't get the ones that are, are now in existence. But, but sorting it all out and, you know, it's. I guess it, if we do that, if we, if we, if sorry. we, um, <laughs> if we say to a date certain and then you know, it's not ready, what happens? You guys just decide we can, to push it? We can continue it once more through the agenda, okay. so through our recommendation to continue to a, a future hearing, and that, that is a possibility. We would do that, we would do, we would write it that way? Uh, no, if, yeah. if, if it was, if the applicant in this instance requested to continue once more, we would just okay. make that uh, recommendation and publish that in the agenda, and that would okay. continue right. it. I'm gonna say we staff. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think we're ready to to make a decision on. You, you, would you? So you, but you can't do March. You would recommend April. Okay. Yeah. Just with the deadlines that we're under, we do have to still. We'll still have to review the uh, the new drawings, uh, as the applicant stated. Uh, one of the reasons we don't have those is because obviously we have to review things before it gets made. Yeah. We make a recommendation to you all. So, uh, okay. yeah. Um, so I think I think we're good um, to move forward. But I just wanted to say for my committee members, um, I think that. You know, I don't know if any of you remember. Do you remember the dentist office where both of you on? Yes. yes. Have you been by there recently? Yes. Okay. I go by it all the time. So that's a project that we <laughs> we rec recommended we recommendations we, for. We recommended approval of the project as, and it was to remain in compliance with the standards. Yes. And it did not. It did not. It did not. So that's my concern about this property. Same here. Yes. Right. It's not really like the project or any, it's, we need, the, the project's great, it's gonna be great, it can remain, it can stay in compliance, but there needs to be a way to make sure that that happens. So I think right. um, with that, I would like to continue this item to a date certain. Do I need to say? April 20th. April 20th. 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 Do we have to second? Yes. Oh, I second. Okay, um, and so it's just to continue it with the following recommendations that you've already lined out? Just to continue it to, a, to the April 20th meeting. Okay. Okay, so, Member Krieg. Yes. 
Member Mueller? Yes. Member Rubrick? Yes. Vice Chair Soriano? Yes. And Chair Prezell? Uh, yes. Motion carries. Or projects continued. None at this time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. If you